And welcome back to redheart.com as well as the crochet crowd. I'm your host Mikey and in today's tutorial we're going to be working on the zigzag stocking by Linda Sear. Now this is a really fabulous pattern. You may have already seen this on redheart.com. It's been online for about a month. You should know that today's filming date is November 10th of 2013. This pattern has been completely rewritten as of yesterday, November 9th, 2013. So if you've seen it before this, downloaded it before this, and even given it a try before this, you should know that the pattern was rewritten because because there were several errors throughout the pattern. So let's uh, get started on today's tutorial. It's gonna be a lengthy one today, and uh, this is a really, really fabulous idea, and I got lots of great tips lined up for you today. To start off our tutorial today, you're gonna need a size five and a half millimeter or a size I crochet hook. Today I'm going to be using a size 6 millimeter or a size J. I'm probably going to get caught. <laughs> you'll probably see it on my hook and you're going to say, Mikey, you're not using the right size hook. Remember to use the yarn that complements your hook the best. I'm going to also be using Red Heart with Love throughout this tutorial. The pattern is calling for Red Heart Super Saver and again the creativity is up to you. Now the original one that you saw up, up front was two balls of Red Heart Boutique Treasure and the yarn color was called Tapestry and then I used a Red Heart um, with Love Chocolate for the border uh, on the very top of the stocking. So again the creativity is up to you on what you want to use for yourself. And finally before we get started today, the entire stocking is 6 inches wide by 26 inches long. It is so big that it doesn't fit here within the camera angle to be able to show you the entire thing. So I have taken photographs to be able to show you that up front. So today we're going to be working on the top, working our way down the particular stocking and once we get you started you're going to see the the repetitive pattern so I'm going to leave you to do that and then you're going to come back and join me again and we're going to start doing the heel formation. We're going to shape the heel. It's not what you think it's going to be and you need to trust me with this and then we're going to work into the foot area and then eventually the toe and then we're going to come back and do the heel area at the very end of this project. Now what's unusual about this project is that usually in stockings we go in circles around and around. This here is done in one big panel like this and then fold it over and then seamed along the one side just like you see. So in actual fact this would be your stocking. So remember use colors that make a difference for you. In my particular formation what I'm doing here is that I used one row of white, this is single crochet, and then three rows of that color and then white and then three rows. You can really play along with your colors. I'm going to give you exactly what you need to do for row counts. So you might be able to figure out some really great ideas. The pattern is calling for four different colors. Again the creativity is up to you. You can do this whole entire thing in one color if you prefer that as well. So let's get started right now. To get started today we're going to be working along the top edge and this loop that you see here is worked into the top edge and it will be something that I'm going to be showing you in just a few moments. I'm going to be showing you how to also make a really beautiful edging along the top. You can see how perfect this looks and then essentially we're going to be working our way down going down the stocking just like so. But once we get you past a certain row you'll see that there's a repetitive pattern and I'm going to show you how to be able to cheat because you may lose count at any one of these chevrons but there's a really simple way to bring yourself back in balance just in case you ever think that you've missed stitches or you have to add stitches. Okay let's begin. We're going to create a slip knot. Remember there always is slower tutorials available on redheart.com as well as the crochet crowd if you're new to crochet and if you just want to take some basic lessons you're more than welcome to do so. So to begin let's go with color number A with A. Chain 61. A means the color and there are four different colors but again the creativity is up to you so you might want to change off your colors anytime you wish. So we're going to be chaining 61 so I'm not going to take you through the entire thing but we're going to chain. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So I simply just want you to chain all the way to 61. We'll be back up in a second. We'll have that done and move along to your next row. Okay let's begin row number one here. It says single crochet twelfth chain from the hook, single crochet in remaining chains across and then turn and then what we have the unworked chains become the hanging loop just like I kind of explained. So this is what we are looking at here. This is your chain work going down. What I strongly recommend is let's, let's turn that chain over and work on these back loops just like you see the kind of like the backbone of the chaining and if you work on those you're going to have a beautiful stitch work uh, when you come to do this. So I simply need you to count back to 12. So just going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 
and 12. So there we go, just like you see here. And um, we're gonna be going into there for a chain. And simply just going through and through. And simply now just on the back loop, it's only, once you turn over the first one, it naturally wants to turn over on itself. So you can see that the back loops are kind of sticking up. There's only one string on there. And simply I just want you to single crochet yourself all the way back to the very start of this chain. And we'll meet you back up in a second and begin row number two. So I've come all the way back across and now we're on the edge and we're now going to move up to row number two. So let's be able to turn this around. Do you see that there's no chevrons? There's no up and down wave motions because row number two is about establishing that right now. Now row number two, there are a lot of instructions here but I'm gonna simplify it to you. I'm not gonna overwhelm you at this point with reading the whole thing. I'm just gonna just carry you along. So here we go. We're gonna chain three. So one, two, and three. And we're gonna go into the same stitch right underneath. Normally in double crochet we'd move right over to the next one but we're gonna do this right here and this is gonna be a tre uh, treble. Okay we are talking American language. So we're gonna wrap around twice and going into that stitch just like so and then we're going to double crochet. So let's double crochet into that same one. So we got three things going on in that one stitch. So here is the repeat pattern and this is really simple. So the next one that we have is gonna be a half double crochet. Okay. And so then the next one here is going to be a single crochet. And then the next two are gonna be slip stitches. So in, pull through and through. In, pull through and through. And now we start getting bigger again. So basically what we've done on this already here of going down, we're now gonna start going up on the other end. So we're gonna start off with a single crochet. The next stitch is gonna be a half double crochet. And the next one is gonna have three stitches inside. So it's gonna start off with the double crochet. We're now gonna have a treble. And then a double crochet. So there is your peak of your first chevron. And now we're gonna come down just like we started in the very beginning. So to come down we're gonna do a half double crochet next. We're going to do a single crochet next. And then two slip stitches in a row. So one and two. So the slip stitches really make a point of really bringing it down right to the bottom so that you can really have some beautiful chevrons. So to make sure that you're good to go, I'm gonna go one more time. So the first one is gonna be a single crochet. The second one is going to be a half double crochet. The next one is gonna be three stitches in there. So there's gonna be a double. There's going to be a treble. And a double. So there's your peak of your next chevron. And then the next one is half, double. And the next one is single. And then the final next two are slip stitches. So carry on all the way to the end. You're gonna be stopping at the loop area just right there. And we'll be back in just a second where we'll carry you along to the next part of the instructions. Okay, coming all the way back to the other side, your last stitch here will be a double crochet and a treble before calling it quits. So wrap and wrap and the treble is your very last stitch before moving along. You will see that we have not changed color yet. We don't want to do that yet. We really want to establish the top row. So let's move along to row number three. So in row number three there's a lot of instructions but again it's made really really simple and I'm gonna give you some also some tips on how to cheat the system just in case that you end up with not enough stitches and etc. So what we wanna start off with, we're gonna chain one and then right where you've started off just like there you're gonna put in two single crochets. So for the next three stitches going down the chevron we are going to do three single crochets in a row I should say. So right in the big middle here, these are the two slip stitches just like you see. We wanna always skip those uh, at this particular point. Um, there will not be any slip stitching beyond this particular row. So this is what we're gonna be skipping. So one, two, skip and then we start doing single crochet going up the other side of the chevron. 
right in the very top here, this is the treble. What we want to do is single crochet, chain one and single crochet. Okay, and now let's go down the next side. So they begin, it's just like when we started over here. We're just gonna go down. So three single crochets in a row. And when you get to the very bottom, there will be two slip stitches, one, two, and we skip over those and single crochet three times going up the other side. And again to the very top. Okay, that's the tre uh, treble, single crochet, chain one and single crochet. Okay, so let's come down the other side again. I'm just gonna review one more time. So three single crochets in a row. One, two and three. We skip over the two single or the slip stitches right in the middle and then we go to the third one over for single crochet back up the other side. And then the top of the treble we single crochet, chain one and single crochet just like so. So continue that same configuration going all the way down and you can see now the rippling is starting to take effect. Okay, so we're just gonna go back up the last side of the chevron. This is the very edge and again it's three single crochets going up just like so. And then on the very final one here we're gonna have two single crochets and that's just like how you started with on the other side. So this would be how you want to do it if you were not gonna change color but I'm gonna have you change color at this particular point because that's what it's asking for. So I want you to back out one stitch and again we have two single crochets in the very final. We're gonna restart the single crochet and we're gonna hold it right now and we're gonna grab on our, our white material. We're just gonna trim off the other one here and bring on our white. And simply we just want to loop it. We never want to do any ties because you don't want to see any of that. And we want to loop it and pull it through the remainder just like you see. So now we're gonna simply turn our work and begin our next row and we'll be right back in just a second. To begin row number four, this is basically gonna be the similar to what you've already done. However, the name of the stitches right in the center point are no longer slip stitches because we didn't slip stitch on the last row. So let's begin. We're gonna chain up one and this is the straggler that we have left over. We just wanna place it down on top of the line and come into the very first stitch where this white is originating out of and we wanna put in two single crochets. And when we do that, we want to make sure that these stragglers are left on top so that they get trapped into position. So the next three going down the chevron are gonna be th three single crochets. So one, two, and see how this is trapping in? It's gonna hide it permanently. This is number three. So essentially now we have to skip over the next two stitches and then start working your way back up the other side. So these would have been the slip stitches in the last row and this one they're no longer slip stitches. They're just regular single crochet that we're skipping over and then we simply just want to come up the other side for three single crochets. So one, two, and three. So now we're into the center. These are where you put the single crochet, chain one single crochet right into there. So we just want to slip in between the two stitches. Okay, there is a, it's really kind of tough to see especially if you're using variegated yarn and we want to single crochet, chain one and single crochet into that same one there. So now this is the key factor I wanna show you. Sometimes this area here buries the very first stitch so then you're off by one count when you're coming down. You have to make sure that you really are paying attention. So we have one, two, and three. And so the next two you're skipping. So one, two, and then coming up one, two, and three. So you really have to watch the top of these chevrons on where things are going and sometimes you have to fake it in order to make it work. So we're actually on the top again. So we're just gonna slip in between the two stitches. We're not going just right in between. And then single crochet, chain one, single crochet. And again, here it is right there. And three going down. Two and three. Okay, skip the next two and then going up. So what happens if you are going down and all of a sudden you realize that you don't have two stitches to skip over because you're gonna be at the top too soon. Just skip over one. You can occasionally do it. There's some errors within my 
uh, a, a tutorial sample and you can't even see it because of the way that I did it. So back on the top we were single crocheting, chain one, single crochet and down the other side. Two and three. So what happens if you have too many stitches left over? I wouldn't recommend it because usually you're going to not have enough but you can probably you know go one, two, three and go to the fourth if you had to. If you really, really had to you probably do it but I wouldn't recommend it but that's just one of my things. If you're ever going to be um, having an error in your count it's probably because you're not going to have enough. So skipping over the middle two and going up the other side for single crochet. Just like you see. And then back in the top we just want to slip in between the two stitches, single crochet, chain one and then back down the other side. So keep going that same configuration. Now I am doing just one color of the white and then I'm switching off to the gray next. And so basically this particular row that we're doing right now, this is row number four, is the identical thing you're going to be doing all the way down until you get to the shaping of the heel. And uh, so if you can get this you pretty well can just uh, do anything. And it's a, just a matter about changing color as you go. So let's uh, just finish off this row. I'll uh, start you off with the next color just to show you how to change again. And again see what's happened here is, is that I've been talking to you and in fact I skipped over this stitch right here. So it's a great example. You know the cat can jump up on you. And I knew that because I got down too far. And once you understand the, the, the configuration of the pattern you can actually clearly see um, right away if you've got enough stitches left on your, your chevrons going up or down. So right in the last one just I was finishing here so I knew that I had one there and I only had three left to go up so I knew I was short one. So then if that happens to you you gotta look back to where you came from and just see if you actually just did exactly what I did. So I'll go to the end of the row we'll meet back up do a color change and then get you started again. So we're back on the end and the final stitch has two single crochets so there's no chaining of one in between and I want to change color. So again I just want to go to the last one here and get your two loops on there and let's cut our yarn, the white out and let's bring on our gray and we just simply just want to loop it again. So this is how you change color. Basically pull it through and finalize the stitch and let's begin row number five. Rows four and five it says to repeat rows four and five they're identical to each other they're just using a different color. So for example four and five are one particular color and that's why they have it separated out in the instructions. So to begin again so this is row number five we're just chaining one single crochet into the very first one twice and make sure you trap down the stragglers and now go down the chevron again. So three in a row so one these are single crochets just like you see here and we want to skip the two middle ones and keeping those stragglers on top and then going up the other side for three. So in my particular stocking what I have here is that I noticed that the pink the way that Linda started off with the design that it was so thick I decided that I was going to maintain that. So there, these colors of the gray and the pink that you see in my stocking there are three rows of each. Once you're back at the top here this is right in between you can clearly see it here now is that you are going to single crochet, chain one, single crochet in, to, in between those two stitches to maintain that and then we simply come down again just like you see here. So continue all the way to the final uh, end of this row. I'm just going to uh, take a quick break here. I'll be right back. I want to explain a few things to you and give you some tips in order to continue because right basically what you're learning right now is everything you need to learn in order to get down to the heel area. So we're back and I want to give you some tips because basically what you've learned now is going to take you through the entire pattern just like you see here. You should know that there's a total of 47 rows going from the top of your particular stocking all the way down to where you start to shape the heel. In this particular sample here some of you may actually uh, figure out that I've only done 41. Just to let you know that the length of the stocking really is up to your creativity but you do want to make sure that the length of the stocking is going to match because if you're going to follow the, the foot area instructions you might have a bigger foot than you would actually have a stocking going up once you get beyond the heel. So just uh, letting you know here there are four colors and it says uh, it gives the configurations and the instructions of C, D, A, C, B and going all the way. It's not an eye test that is the color configuration to match what you see in the photograph. Here again I'm using three colors and basically I determined this is where I want to begin. 
So I want you to continue now all the way down. Get all the way to row number 47 or stop just slightly beforehand. If you're doing this kind of configuration I have to begin a white row one more time because what if you notice in the photograph that you will see that the white area is, is kind of dividing off into two as we do the shaping of the heel and the shaping of the heel is actually really really simple. So let's uh, begin. I will meet you back up. Is This will take you about uh, maybe an hour, maybe an hour and a half to get all the way down to the bottom and then we'll meet back up in just a few seconds as we'll start to shape the heel together. So congratulations if you are now at the heel area. I know that was a little bit of work for you but this pattern is definitely worth it. So now we're about to shape the heel area and there are instructions from one to seven and just this is just exactly how it looks. So the green area here is everything that you've been working on ever since you've started this particular pattern. So this is what we have going on right now. So we're gonna be repeating rows one to seven for shaping of the heel twice. And the reason for it is that we're going to be creating these ridges that are up on one side. So when we about to start the first one here, we're just going a partial way over a little bit and by the time that we've done the instructions, it will look like this configuration and then we will crochet all the way across. And when we go to restart the line again one more time to go from one to seven, we start in the other side and work our way and we come all the way back just like so. So what's gonna happen by the time we are done rows one to seven twice, you are going to see the this configuration looking just like this. And this is what is creating the bend in the front part of your heel. This is the front part of the heel and so you just have to visualize this because it's not until you actually do the heel configuration right at the very end that you will see the actual sock begin to take its real form. So we're about to start now and it says with C but if you looked at the instructions from rows 1 to 5 on the very final paragraph it says do not change color at the end of the last row and continue with C and you will notice that of all the abbreviations of all the color C was the final color. So exactly what we're doing with bending the heel at this point we're just using the same color so I'm going to continue to use white. So let's uh, begin. I have not fastened off. I have just finished off what I want to do and essentially we're about to start right now. So let's begin. We're going to chain up one and we're going to do two single crochets in the same thing. So we're essentially with this heel we are going to be maintaining this wavy pattern. It's really quite interesting so just stick with here. So it's going to be three single crochets in a row and it says skip the next two single crochets. So it's just like what you've been doing all along and coming back up to the other side. Okay, so this is where we're at. So we're at the top of the next one here and essentially we just want to go in there and single crochet twice and that's it. Okay, that is row number one. So when we're building up on the chevron, we're building it up in increments like stacking building blocks because the next rows are gonna be a little bit different. So let's move on to row number two. Let's turn our work just like so. So in rows number two, we're gonna just uh, begin to chain up one and it's just like you were on the other side going all the way across. There's no fancy footwork. We are going to single crochet twice just like so and work our way down and then back up the other side just like you have been all along. So every other row with these heels, um, the shaping of the heel is ex done the exact same way just like so going across. So here we go and coming back up the other side I skip two single crochets right in the center and then for the final stitch we are gonna do two single crochets again and just like so and that completes row number two within the heel formation and this is what it looks like at this point. Okay, let's begin to turn our work and go on to row number three. Very, very simple again. So the only difference in row number three is that we are gonna go over one more chevron. So this is where we stopped last time. The next one we're gonna stop on the very next one just like you see. So here we go. Let's begin again. So we're going to chain up one and then two single crochets into the same one. So this is how you started everything else and then we come down just like you have been three single crochets. We skip the bottom two and come up the other side. One and two and three. So here is the difference. This is where you've run out from the last row, right? So what you want on this top one here, we want to single crochet, chain one and single crochet. 
and it says now to in the instructions, it says working across the unworked stitches in the previous row, single crochet, blah, 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 blah. So what they're saying to you right at this point is that this is where you're at the top here. Come down here, okay, for the three. Just gotta be careful here that this stitch right here is almost being hidden. So you gotta watch that. So we're just immediately gonna jump down to this row that we were not using in the last one. So it pulls it down just like that and we go down for three single crochets down. We skip the two middles and back up the other side. And at the very top one of the next one we put two single crochets just like you see. So you can essentially see that we started up on a higher level up here but then once we got to this point we literally just brought it back and this is part of what is raising it up on the triangle just like I showed you in the instructions. So let's begin row number four. We just want to simply turn our work just like you see and to begin it's just like you were working down on the other side. No big deal and we want to start off with two single crochets just like there and we're just going up and down just like we have been all along. So three singles in a row. We skip the two middles. So one, okay, two and three. And so now you're back up onto the top. So there is a single crochet, chain one, single crochet again in and then we come back down. One, two and three. Okay, and so we come up on the other side. So this is where you can start flubbing, <laughs> flubbing the, the, the directions a little bit. You can see that I run out of stitches. I'm actually missing one. So this is actually a great lesson for you because I'm just gonna say you know what there should be two there. There isn't two. I'm just gonna skip over one instead. Come up my three single crochets and then at the top we just want to put in two single crochets. You can do that once in a while in this pattern. I did it many times before because you know you get distracted really easily. So this is what you have and that completes off round number four at this point. So let's begin row number five just like you see and essentially what's happened now is this is the way it looks. You can see that I'm building up on the triangle. So the very next one row number five we're gonna now go to the next chevron that's up here. Okay so we're gonna extend across. So let's begin again. So it's just like you normally would have started. So chain one, two single crochets in there and then coming down. So three single crochet and because I in the last one I told you that I was missing a stitch it should be back in balance right now because then I, I threw in the stitches where it should have been. Okay back at the top single crochet, chain one, single crochet coming back down. So remember with crochet it's about improvising too. Sometimes you gotta fake it or make it and uh, instead of always having to frog your work because honestly nobody's perfect. So we're coming back up the other side just like you see. So all those write, written instructions this is really quite simple. Coming back on the top so I told you that we want to go over to the next one that's available over here. So that means that this last one here is chain or single crochet, chain one, single crochet and simply now just coming back down to this row down here and we want to three single crochets moving down. So you, we actually just jumped over several rows going backward down into the bottom level and then coming back up the other side. Put three single crochets and then the top one here this is what we're finishing is two single crochets just like it would be at the end of the row and that would be completing off row number five. So let's begin row number six. We're gonna turn our work yet again and it's simply we're just gonna start off again. So chaining one and there's no fancy footwork here. It's the same thing that you've been doing. You're starting a row and then going down. So one, two, Three. The only difference really in these rows is that you basically are getting further and farther into the middle of the project in order to figure it out just like you see. So then basically your rows just get longer and longer as you're doing it and it does require this in order for you to do this. So at the top of this one we're a single crocheting, chain one, single crochet and then continuing along. Yeah, just like in the same pattern going all the way across. So you can see that the white um, got significantly thicker and uh, that's per as per the instructions. And coming back down for the final. 
area here. And then again, see it's interesting I missed a stitch before and now I'm short again a stitch. So there must be something weird that I'm doing. So one, two, that's one, two, three, four, one, two, actually yeah. So I'm just gonna again I should be skipping two but I'm not. Not sure why that is. But again I am going to just throw it in there because I can and because it really doesn't make much of a difference at this particular point. The final one is gonna be two single crochets. So you can see that when you stretch it back out you really can't see that I've not skipped over two. <laughs> I know sometimes you gotta fake it. So let's move along to your next row. So this is final row number uh, seven just like you see. So you can really see now I built up on the chevron just like I promised and so then the next one here row number seven we are going to go to the middle one here. Okay, so we've stopped here. We're gonna go to the very next one and then we're gonna work our way all the way across. So here's where we go. So row number seven. So let's go to and okay, just like that. So we started off with two single crochets just like we normally did. And coming down for three. And then back up the other side. So we skipped over two just like you have been all along. And then in the top again. So single crochet, chain one, single crochet, and go down again. Okay. And then essentially we want to do that. Skip over the two. Just like you see. top again. So it's a, a single crochet, chain one, single crochet. Okay, coming back down the other side. And essentially this row, as much as I was trying to explain that you're gonna be moving over one, the reality is is that we are going all the way across in this one just like it would be if it was a normal row. So this is the final before you run into this next area here. And again the final area would be single crochet, chain one, single crochet. And now we simply just come back down onto this line going in the downward position way down there. And we just want to complete the rest of this line going all the way across. So we're not gonna be turning and going back anytime soon. We're gonna go all the way to the end of the row and that'll complete off row number seven. So meet me back up there uh, and we're gonna start on uh, rows number one to seven one more time to do the heel because we've only done one side of our stocking at this point. So we're now coming all the way across and the final one is two single crochets just like it would be if it was normal. And essentially we want to keep on the white color at this point. So as promised this is what it looks like. So we have the, the triangle up on the one side and now it's time to do the triangle on the other side. And you can see that there's one chevron, two chevron, three chevrons being absorbed into this. Therefore there will be one, two and three leaving the bottom just like this. So essentially when it comes together it will have a nice forming shape. So let's uh, turn our work and begin on row number one once again as we do the heel. And now because we've turned our work and we've gone all the way across, we're now automatically gonna be doing the heel configuration on this side where we've already finished off on the other side. So let's begin row number one. So to begin row number one now that you've gone through the configuration, you can probably get the, the gist of it pretty good. Okay, so we're gonna single crochet twice into the first one. We chain one single crochet uh, twice into the first. We come down for the next three single crochets. One, two, and three. And then we skip over the middle two and going up the other side. So one, two, and three. And then we are gonna be stopping right at the top of here. So we're just gonna do two single crochets just like so. So there is row number one. So I'm gonna go a little bit faster on this one because I think you get the point at this point. So turning our work we're gonna go to row number two. Row number two we're just gonna make our way all the way back and again we just chain one, two single crochets into the same one and then come down for three single crochets. We skip the two middle ones and going back up for three and because we're on an edge it's gonna be two single crochets into the final. So that completes off round number two. Let's move along to round number three. 
row number three and essentially we want to again extend it now to the next chevron over. So we're gonna come all the way over to here. So let's begin. So we're gonna start off with chaining of one and going to two single crochets and then coming down so three in a row. We're gonna skip the two middle and going up the other side but you're about to run out from the row before. So the final one here is going to be a single crochet. Oops, excuse me. Single crochet, chain one, single crochet, but I told you we need to get to the next row on over. So we immediately come down to this row down here and go down for three single crochets. Two and three, skipping over the middle two and coming back up to the next one and we're gonna be stopping at this chevron coming up the other side and the final stitch will be two single crochets like it would be a normal edge and that'll complete off this round. This is row number three. Row number four, we're just gonna turn our work and basically make our way back to the back edge. So chaining of one, two single crochets into the edge as always and then down two and three. We skip over the middle, one, two and three and you're at the top now. So a single crochet, chain one, single crochet. Going down again the slope, one, two and three. Okay, skip the two middles, so one, two and three. And then you're on the edge again, so two single crochets and that completes off that round number four. Let's move along to round number five. Next. Round number five, we're simply gonna turn our work once again and start off. And so round number five, we're gonna make our way all the way to the next chevron that's available. So that'd be round number five. So let's begin. So chain one and two single crochets in and then coming down. So one for three one, two, and three single crochets. Skip over two, back up the other side. One, two, and three. Okay, we're now in the middle. So single crochet, chain one, single crochet. Back down again. So one, two, and three. Okay, skip over the two middle. One, two, and three and I told you that we need to get over to one more chevron. So the top one here which would be the final of that last row is uh, single crochet, chain one, single crochet and then we immediately come back down over here and go back down the slope. So for one, two and three. Okay, we go up the slope, one, two and three. Okay, and we're at the top here. We're gonna finish here so it's two single crochets right at the top and that completes off round number five. Let's begin row number six. We're gonna turn our work again and essentially we're gonna just make our way back to the final edge. So chaining of one, two singles into the first. Okay, and coming down one, two, and three. Okay, coming over, skipping over two, going up the slope, two and three. Okay, we're in the middle. So it's gonna be a single crochet, chain one, single crochet, and coming back down the slope for three, one, two, and three. Skipping over the two middle. So one, two, and three. You're at the next top of the chevron. So right in between, single crochet, chain one, single crochet, and then coming back down the chevron again. One, two, and three. Skip over the middle two, and then coming up the other side. One, two, and three, and then two single crochets to finalize row number six. So row number seven is the next. It is the final of shaping the heel area just like you see. Okay row number seven we're gonna turn our work and this is what we're looking like at this point. So you can see as I promised that you have the chevrons going up like a triangle going up on one side, triangle going up on the other. This is the final one of the shaping of the heel and essentially we are now going to just chain one 
and single crochet ourselves twice into the first and we're essentially just gonna go up and down this entire row spanning all the way across. So three singles down are going down, skip the two middle, three singles going up and in the middle of the top of the chevrons of course it's a single crochet, chain one, single crochet and then coming down again. One, two and three you might actually get tired of going one, two and three in this whole entire project. <laughs> going up the other side just like you have been all along. Top of the chevron of course, single crochet, chain one, single crochet and then coming back down the other side. So one, two and three. Oops. Three and skip the two middle coming up the other side. So one, two and three and of course I have to go all the way across. This is the final of this one here. So we're just going to single crochet, chain one, single crochet to maintain the balance and then we come back down on the row underneath and we go all the way across. We're coming down for three, skipping the two middle, coming up the other side for three. I kind of like see the way I grab that. I didn't, I don't like the way I grab that stitch. Sometimes you just got to look at your work and be a little bit self critical. Uh, back at the top of the chevron, single crochet, chain one, single crochet and then coming down again. One, two and three. Skip the two middle. So I'm going all the way across in this line which concludes this and if you look at Linda's instructions at the end of it we're going to change our color uh, back off to something else depending on what you want to do. For myself I've already made the decision I'm going to switch back to the hot pink and uh, start with that one once again. And so we're going to start the foot area next and I'm going to show you because basically now that you've gone this far you are well beyond the halfway point for getting the stocking done. So the final chevron is three going down. And I can see here that I misgrabbed one. One, two and three. So this is again you have to be a little bit critical on yourself. So one, two and three. Okay, skipping the middle two and then one two and three and then the final one is going to be two single crochets but we do not want to finish off the last one. I want to change the color to hot pink once again and simply just grabbing my scissors. I'm going to loop the hot pink on just like you see. I'm going to turn my work and now this is exactly where we are at this point. So you can see that we're going up and down on both sides based on doing the instructions that Linda has asked us to do. So congratulations if you made it this far. We're about to start the foot area and you should have what it looks like right now. So you have two triangles going up and so it basically is dipping down inside the middle. So the foot area is just exactly what you've been doing all the way going up the stocking. We're just now going to restart and because it is going in a down configuration like this you will notice that this work will start to have a little bit of a pucker. It'll have a little bit of an indentation in it and that's to help it give it the heel shape in the end of the project. You will not see this project do any major wicked turns like you would normally see in a stocking. That doesn't happen until right at the very end. So I've already changed my color and we simply just want to start our rows. There is a total of 14 rows that are required for the foot area area and again we just want to trap in our stragglers like I've already showed you before. So regardless of the colors that you're using or the configuration Linda, Linda is asking us to do 14 rows. So off camera I'm going to have to do my 14 rows in order to get caught back up and essentially that is where you are at this particular point. So we're going to work our way down. I'm just coming all the way down. You're going to skip our two middle ones again and just exactly what you already know how to do you're just going to do it all over again just going all the way across. 
So what I want you to do is get rows 1 to 14 done just like you've been going all the way across and we're gonna meet back up here in just a few moments and I'm gonna show you how then to shape the heel. So I got a little bit of homework ahead of me before I can continue myself. So we're just finishing up the foot area here. This is the last row and I just want to simply just change my color. I wanna be very honest with you right here is that I only did 12 rows instead of 14 like I asked you to. The reason for it is that I didn't wanna ruin my color scheme because you can see that I have the perfect lineup right now. So I can either adjust the foot to do another uh, section of this but I only have two more rows, 13 and 14 and by the time I did that I'd end up with two rows extra at the end. So this just proves the point that you're creativity is up to you and this pattern is very versatile to match your needs. So let's move along. We're going to do the toe shape next. So congratulations. We're now to do the shape of the toe and basically we have the top of the stocking here. We have our heel shaping right here and we have our foot section and now it's time to shape the toe. So basically you have a panel that looks like this at this point. You will notice right in this area for example that it'll look like it's kind of bending out of shape or kind of uh, really weird but if you actually fold it over at this point you will be able to start seeing the actual configuration of your um, stocking coming together. So let's begin. We're going to start on row number one next. Okay, let's begin row number one and it says with A which is the color chain one, a single crochet in the next four. So this is the really interesting thing. We are no longer going to be doing any more chevroning at this point. We are simply just going to single crochet our way across. But before you jump ahead, I don't want you to single crochet all the way across. We do have to do a little bit of fancy footwork but once you get it, it's really cool. So we're going to chain up one and we're going to put only one stitch in the corner or in the, the starting stitch. We have been doing two up into this point. So we're simply now going to go down, okay, and three single crochets in a row. Just like so and you can see that I'm burying in the top of the straggler so you won't see them. We're, st we're now going to skip over the middle two for sure and going over to this, uh, this third one over. So it's just like you're doing the chevron but we're, when we get to the top of the next one this is where we change our, our footwork a little bit. So we're no longer going to be doing the chevron. So on the top stitch we've been doing single crochet, chain one, single crochet and so what I want you to do at this point is just one single crochet only and then come down the other side for three. So one, two and three. We skip over the two middle one and just basically come up and over top of the, the next chevron. So the middle one we don't worry about the fancy footwork just one single crochet and then down the other side for three and skipping over the middle two just like before. So do that all the way across. This is row number one and you will start to see that it's going to start to even more out instead of being more wavy up and down. When we get back to the other side here we're just going to simply just continue the configuration and then on the very last one we've been normally doing two single crochet but in this one it'll just be one and that completes off row number one. Let's move along to row number two. We're going to turn our work just like you see and begin again. So this time we're going to be chaining one on the end just like you see and it's simply it's only we're only going to do three. So one single crochet two single crochet and three. Okay the last one was four going down. We're going to still skip the middle two and simply just the single crochet over top just like this and there will be a total of five. So there's one, two, three, four and five and so then you're back on the middle two section here because you can still start to still make out the wave a little bit and you will still skip over two at that point. So one, two, three, four and five and again skip over the middle two. So every time we're going across we're getting smaller and smaller so that your basically your stitch work starts to get faster and faster because you obviously have less distance to go. So continuing to skip the two in the middles. So that's three, four and five and during my sample that I showed you in the very beginning with the, the more woodsy looking color. I was really surprised that my stitch work was actually matching um, the final counts at the end because sometimes I ad lib or something always goes wrong so I was just kind of laughing to myself kind of quietly that hey I did it. I was really excited about that. So we're just going all the way across just like we have been and those stragglers are obviously there. 
the part of that other line and so it's again skipping over so we went down three on the other side so we're going to be going back up three on this side and that'll conclude off round number two and what I'm going to do off camera is I'm going to pull my stragglers tight and trim them so I don't need to worry about that any longer. Let's move along to row number three for shaping of the toe and you will start to see that it's starting to narrow in a little bit it's not too dramatic yet but let's uh, begin the next one. We're gonna chain up one and single crochet in the first two. So the first one and two are gonna be single crochet and then we're still gonna skip over two. So now it's skipping over the next two and now we're gonna do three single crochets in a row. So one, two, and three. And again skipping the next two and then one, two, and three. Okay, skipping over the next two so we're back to that counting of one, two, and three. I don't know how much you're loving that. So one, two, and then one, two, whoops, two, and three. Skipping over next two. So one, two, and three. And skipping over the next two. So one, two, and three just like so. Skipping over the next two and simply just coming uh, up the other side for one and two only and that completes off round number three. So now you can really start to see that it's starting to pull together like curtains. Okay this is the final row that we have. This is row number four of shaping the toe area and you can see that it's starting to really come up and so this is again a very simple process. So chaining of one, one single crochet in the first. We still skipping our two, one and two going into the next just like a one single crochet. Skipping two, one single crochet, skipping two, one single crochet, skipping two, skipping two, one single crochet skipping two, one single crochet and then skipping the two and you will be right on the very end. And at this point we're going to fasten this off and this is part that we're going to have to sew in afterward. So let's move along to the next part of this tutorial. So congratulations if you're now ready to start your heel patch. I do have a method to my madness. You will see that I have a gray toe here and what I want to do is that I have the pink on both sides of the white so I want my heel patch to be gray as well. I have been deciding this as I've been going along. These colors basically are just kind of lining in with each other but again this is about creativity and essentially I could do white but I think it would blend in too much and I could do pink but then I already have it here. So I'm gonna do gray because there is a distance of gray not being used in between just like so. So let's uh, begin. We're gonna start off with round number, row number one. Let's begin row number one and we are going to be chaining 19 and again I just mentioned I was using gray. So again just let's chain 19 together. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. And before you start flipping out th this distance that you see is not exactly what you're looking at. You're actually going to be doing a triangle shape just like so. So you know don't let that discourage you that you think that it's way off in an actual fact. The way that we're going to do it next is that we're turning this into a triangle. To begin we're going to be doing row number one. It says single crochet second from the hook and then single crochet and the next seven chains and then skip two blah blah blah. So let's go over. So we're going to one two and we're going to start our first one and then it says to do um, single crochet um, seven more times. So this is going one and it's two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now according to the instructions we're going to skip the next two on here and essentially what we're going to be doing at this point is that we're going to single crochet in the last eight. So skipping over two we should have eight left. So one, two. You can see that because we've skipped the triangle is now starting to take effect. So three, four, five, six, seven, 
and eight. And that concludes off round number one or row number one. And so that's exactly what I was talking about. Now you have the starting of the triangle. Row number two, we're just gonna turn our work. And again, we're gonna chain up one. Okay, and we're going to single crochet in the first seven. So we got one, whoops, we have one single crochet and we have two, three, four, and then five, six, and seven. And it says to skip over the next two single crochets. So those are right in the center, so one and two, and then go, go to the other side and there should be seven left on the other side. So one, and two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So that concludes off row number two. So you can see it's now starting to come together even better. Okay, let's turn our work again. We're gonna go on to row number three, chaining of one, and then it says to single crochet in the first six. So we got one, two, three, four, five, and six. And now we're gonna skip over the two middle ones again. So one and two, and come on the other side for six. So one, two, three, and this is four, five, and six, just like you see. So that concludes off the, this round. Let's move on to round number four. Turning our work now, we're going to row number five. So, so turning our work now, we're going on to row number four, chaining of one, and then we simply just going to um, single crochet five times. So that's one, two, three, four, and five, and that, that means that we have to then skip the, the middle two. Okay, so one, one, and two. Come on the other side for five again. So one, two, three, four, and five. And that concludes off row number four. Let's begin row number five. We're gonna turn our work, and this one's unusual, so just pay attention here. So we have chain one, skip first single crochet, single crochet, and, and the three single crochets and then skip over. So we're gonna be skipping over right underneath where we have been going and we're just gonna go over to three single crochets in a row. We're still gonna skip over the two and then we're gonna come on the other side for four single crochets. So why did we do that? And it's not equal like it was on the other side. The fact is is that when we chained one, it actually brought it smaller anyway. So that's why you have three coming down this side and four going up the other because that chaining of one counts as one in order to keep it balanced. Let's turn our work again. We're gonna do chain one just like you see. And then what we're gonna do is first um, single crochet, uh, single crochet in the next two and then skip two single crochets and then uh, single crochet in the next two single crochets. So that's how we go. So we're gonna chain one. So we're gonna, we've already done that. We're gonna start off with a single crochet in the first just like you see. Single crochet in the next two, one and two. We're still gonna skip the middle two, so one and two, and then essentially we come to the other side and then we just have to single crochet twice on the other side. And the reason for that is that because in the last round we um, made it smaller on one side, that's why it's doing it on this side. So just uh, bear with me on that. And we're gonna turn our work one last time. It is chain one and we are going to skip all of the stitches and go to this last stitch for a single crochet just like you see and now we're gonna uh, finish off our work. So fasten this off and weave in the ends and reverse this video to do one more of these because we need to do two of these in order to do the heel. So we're now ready to assemble our stocking, very easy. These are the two pieces of the heel, then they've been put together. So if you look at the chevron going up and down just like so, the other one has been put together and this is the seam line. So now we have to go look at the stocking and we have to decide which side that we want to face outward. Now these have a very different side. The white is very pronounced on this side of it and it's not so pronounced on this side, I've noticed. So the inside is the one that I want showing when it's hanging up on the mount mantle. So the 
inside of the stocking is now being shown. So what we need to do is that we need to do a whip stitch all the way from the one side all the way to the other. And remember that the heel is just a patch that goes over top. So essentially I've already started and I'm just going on the outside just as a, a simple little whip stitch going all the way and we go all the way from the top of this stocking all the way to the bottom. And so do that and come all the way to the bottom and then we want to turn our stocking the other way and then begin to put on to the patch so that it brings this con uh, stocking to conclusion today. Once you have your seam all the way done just reach in and let's turn this so that the good side is facing out. And this is what people are going to see when it's hanging up just like you see. So you will notice that you have a big white area that is sticking out like a sore thumb just like so. So this is where that patch is coming into play at this point is that the patch needs to go down in top of that. So what we have here is that the outside chevrons, so this is the, the seam line. So if you turn it the other way, it's the good side. We just want to tack it to the outside of this to be able to give it its final look for a heel. So that's our next part. To begin, what I want you to do is take the heel and take the seam line that's in the center right here and just fold it up over the back part like this. So essentially now if you turn it, it'll be equal on both sides. What I want you to do is just pick a side regardless of what it is, just make sure it's nice and even, and grab your yarn and now start tacking it down. So just push into a stitch or so. So you don't want to go right through it or you'll have um, in the interior of the stocking sewed together on both sides. So leaving the straggler in, I'm just coming down on the outside stitches of the patch and then just going in and just grabbing a couple strings like so. So this is really just a patch. It's really, it's not a functional part of the stocking. It's just for visual. So it doesn't need to be on there like too hard that it's going to wear off if if you're doing anything with it. So continue to go all the way around. Just make sure you just watch this back end here. Make sure that it stays even and then just you can even pull it and stretch it a little bit in order to get balance in order to get it to look right. Okay once you get the back end done on the one side so essentially we could just turn it over and now just continue on the other side and if you're looking at if you pulled it like I did here just make sure that you try to pull it so it looks the same just in case somebody turns it around and <laughs> says you, you didn't do it right. So it's just a very easy thing and so continue to just take the yarn and just wrap it around the back of the stocking and continue to tack into position. So here we have it. My stockings are complete just like you see here. So the only thing it needs is some gifts inside. In the next part of this tutorial I'm going to show you how I did the cuffing just like this. It's 14 rows of single crochet around the top and I just folded it over top and then added my own embellishments. As you can see the patches on this just kind of going over just help it create to give the look of the turn and as you can see it is really quite amazing. So how would you add a cuff to this? Very very simple because I had you turn over the chain in the very beginning that you will have beautiful stitches that you can see in the top. So essentially just grab your new yarn. In my case it will be white and simply just begin to chain one first and then what you want to do is you want to single crochet into each one of those stitches going all the way around and because it was waving up and down it will balance out and essentially you can just go around and around. Mine, I have a total of 14 rounds in mine in order to really produce a nice cuff that falls down over the top of it and then you can add your embellishments to this area of the cuff as well. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of RedHeart.com as well as the Crochet Crowd. Thank you so much for joining me and I wish you a really fabulous happy holiday season ahead and stay tuned next time as we have another gift of Christmas.